In this micro nugget, we address the question, what is a proxy server? I'm James Conrad. All right, folks, a proxy server really reminds me of second grade. You see, when I was in second grade, I had my teacher at the front of the class here, and this is the front wall of the class. And then there was uh, me right here. I had a friend in the second row, and then Shelly was in the front row. Well, Shelly was a girl that I had a second grade puppy love crush on. So what did I do? I did the brave thing, of course. I asked my friend to find out if Shelly liked me. <laughs> so I had my friend pass Shelly this note. You know what is one of those things that has a check mark here for yes, do you like James? Yes. And then here one that says no. And I had my friend pass the note to Shelly. I'm not going to tell you which one of these she selected. Uh, but anyway, uh, so my p friend passed the note, and then Shelly passed the note back to my friend, who then passed it back to me. And I went home brokenhearted and dejected. <laughs> well, it's kind of like that with proxy servers as well, because the proxy server will protect our identity from another party. That's one of the jobs that it has. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the functions of a proxy. So, with a proxy server, it does much like what my friend did for me in second grade, where it would help to obscure the client's IP address or their identity. So, if we take a look at this as an example, let's say that this is me, and maybe my IP address is 10.9.8. Let's say dot five. Okay, and this is my friend. My friend has an IP address that's also in the same network. Notice 10.9.8, 10.9.8. Uh, the specific IP address on the interface for that port would be. Dot 254. So we're all on a private IP address here. One of the advantages of these ranges, and there's several others as well, is that it will not be routable on the internet. Even if my friend wasn't here and I had a direct connection to the internet, I, there's no way that I could directly communicate on the internet, uh, even if I was physically connected to it. So here my proxy, or my friend, will pass the messages for me so that it will convert my IP address from a private IP address to a public address. IP address. So this is routable on the internet, therefore it can send and receive information to other servers out there on the internet, such as web servers here. And then if I ask for a specific web page, like www. you know CBT Nuggets or something like this, then I will send it through the proxy server here, just for clarity, I'll label it. Send it through my proxy server friend, and my proxy will pass the request on my behalf. It remembers who sent the request out to distinguish my request from other people over here. And then it will send it out using its public IP address so that this web server can respond to that request. It'll come back inbound to the same IP address. And then the proxy server knows who requested that information originally, and it will properly route that up to me as needed. The whole time, this, uh, this web server out here or any other internet parties out on this side of the proxy server don't really know my specific identity internally. The other thing that a proxy server can do for you is to help block malicious traffic. It really just kind of obscures you so that it's not really uh, easily apparent how to attack you. Uh, so, for example, if I have a spiky-haired you know, hacker out here on the internet, all hackers have spiky hair, uh, then what can happen here is they say, I know about this company over here and I want to attack one of the computers internally, but since we're on this private IP address, they really just kind of attack against this interface and then it really just kind of drops off from there. Now, there's of course other things hackers can do to work around that. They might be able to exploit the proxy server itself somehow if there's a hack around that, but at least on the surface, it's going to protect us from that kind of malicious traffic. Also, it will help to block sites. So if we're trying to access a website out here, maybe that's a prohibited site. Uh, maybe it Twitter or Facebook or some adult website or something like that that we don't want our company employees accessing on company time and using company computers, well, we can set up rules on the proxy server that will block traffic to those specific sites. So proxy servers have white lists, some have black lists, some have up regularly updated lists for different categories of web content and so forth. Also, it can log activity. Not only will it identify which websites I did go out here to visit, it can even identify which sites I tried to visit <laughs> that might have been blocked. It can identify how much time I spent out there on Amazon.com doing my Christmas shopping on company time and, and so forth. And also, one of the big advantages of a proxy, and this is the last one for now, uh, is that it will improve performance. By the way, there's a lot of other things a proxy can do, but this is kind of the main bullet list of its capabilities. But it can improve performance. So let's say I went out to this website, and this is www.cbtnuggets.com, and uh, I was looking at content there. Well, when I pass that request through the proxy and receive content back, the, the proxy cached that data, okay? 
And then what happens is anybody else that needs to access that same data, they will also go to the proxy server to request it. But since the proxy server has already cached it, not a very good age there, <laughs> but since it's already cached it, it doesn't go all the way to the internet and retrieve that same data back. No, instead it just retrieves it out of the cached information that it has, and it saves us on our internet bandwidth right here. So that's kind of our short list of what a proxy server can do for you. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.